I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Pallett. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence, shoot with swagger. On X Hunt, know where you stand. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Well, we're, well, I don't know, late afternoon, wind ain't let down yet, so we're gonna work on some more coon stuff. We're gonna have a coon episode. What do you think of that? We've been driving around, you see cottonwoods, den trees, what I call them, big holes in them. Been driving around doing a little glass and we found a couple down here. We're gonna go see if anybody's home. Seems like I find myself calling coons when it's terrible windy and we tried stand after stand for coyotes. I know y'all think every time I go out and coyotes just come in, but that's not how it works all the time. Some days the coyotes, they're just not moving. You can't call them in and I'm, for me, I can always go find some den trees and call some coons. This particular coon we got with Patterson while we were on coyote, calling coyotes with him. We were talking about calling coons walking out of there and Max seen one in a big old cottonwood. It was out of, of its den by the hole, sunning itself. That's what they do sometimes when it's been real cold. So I was like, yeah, we let's set up on him and try. So. We got stuff set up and it was nice and smooth. You could see real good. And I turned the Coon Distress one on and it got up there and it was looking around, looking around, looking around. And then another one you could tell was coming up there and I could hear growling and stuff. And the other, that one didn't come, but then another one, all, I didn't even see it. And all of a sudden it's, it's charging the call right up to it. What? Patterson dusted him with his <laughs> shotgun. A little bit of coon call in there in between coyote kills. Everybody ought to try it once, I can tell you that for sure. I was wanting him to attack the call and then shoot him and then blow the call and the coon up. Yeah. Did you see how fluffed up he was? <laughs> that was fun. You two were over there talking still when that one came over the hill here. I didn't even see it until he was right <laughs> Max here. and I were I'm all like, ready for that coming. one. He ain't coming. Yeah. I was about ready to shut the call off because it either works in five minutes or it don't. Calling the raccoons is definitely fast paced. That's another reason I like it. I don't seem to have a lot of patience and that calling coons, if you don't have any patience, that's your game right there because for me, if they ain't there in five minutes or less, I'm headed to the next one. So we go pick up Pops and he's 75 and I just love going hunting with him. Me and my dad are more like brothers. So we get set up. He was to our left and I had to call out here in front of me, which was dumb, but it just, we, I just didn't think about this call placement and had it over here in front of me. I have the 17 HMR. Comes one. First coon comes tearing in there. He's coming this way. Got him. Just like it's supposed to, but it don't get to the call. He gets it shot. I give it a couple with the 17. Oh, we see another one coming from the same place. This coon, I don't know why, but it, it just, it didn't come to the call. It just went right by it and he just had a split second because he's to my left. He shot, you know, and as soon as that happened, he got all kind of crossed up and he was mad because of the way I had it set up and how was he supposed to shoot? And he didn't like that shooting across our bow, you know. Set up right so I could shoot. Crying out loud, worse than your mother. 
Where, where, how, when did you shoot? After we went by it? Just as he went by it, I didn't have any other time. Well, I know, yeah, well, we... I should have should have shot him before. What? Hey, let me do an interview here. Zip it, and we're gonna leave you in the truck or the nursing home. All right, well, we had a couple of hard chargers. That's what we're looking for. One of them checked up, didn't quite get to the call. The other one, instead of running over it, he did what I call a drive-by. And the way we set up, the old man had about six feet to shoot or he was gonna shoot us. So it, it, it gets your blood pumping and that's what we like about it. It's what, what we do when it's too windy to go calling coyotes. To me, I'm no coon expert, but there's three different ways to do it. Den trees, brush piles, abandoned homesteads. They're, they're always in all of them. You put the call right close to the den tree, crank it up, but they're always running around up in the tree, climbing up one side of it, this or that, and you blast them and they fall down on the ground. And, that's one way to do it. But I, I like to move back 60, 70 yards away from where I think they're at, because I'm looking for a particular coon that wants to fight and comes, I like it when they come run over the call. And so that's why I stay back. So we made a couple of dry stands with dad and then we were running out of light. We got about an hour left. We got a spot where I've called a lot of coons in over the years but I want to get two more spots in. Like we always say, we're always chasing the sun. We jog into this spot, climb over this fence, set up in this pasture. I turn the call on, got the revolt cranked up. I like to run it about, not full volume, but about 25. And I don't think it was probably a minute and a half. Here comes this coon. And it's, a, it's one, like I, it's the coon I think I'm looking for that's gonna run over the call. Should be kind of interesting, huh? That's how you call raccoons. On the, our calls, there's four coon sounds. I'm working on a couple more, but I like the top one. When you open the folder, it's called Raccoon Distress 2. I start out with it, play it almost wide open, especially if it's windy, for two or three minutes. And then I go to Raccoon Distress 1, which is the third sound down from the top play it for a couple minutes and then I play raccoon pup which is this one so I go from coon distress 2 to coon distress 1 to coon pups about every two or three minutes I change and I'm out of here after probably five to seven minutes. Our last coon stand of the evening is a, always a good producer. It's an old run down abandoned homestead from years back. We quick get in there, get set up. I get the call going. They always come out of this old house, but I've never seen one come out of the chimney dropped out of the chimney onto the side of the roof come there's a little tree kind of growed up along the side of the house and that thing came down that straight down i mean it it was like this and it was to the call well you know i'm going to give you a bunch of crap don't you i don't care you know, eventually the youngsters can take over. You made, a, you made a good second shot. That was cool. I've never seen one come down out of a chimney. But How many is actually in there? I don't know, but he was teed off, I'm telling you. As far as coon hunting goes, I just love to do it. They're not really worth a lot as far as fur anymore. There's too many of them. They're hard on every bird that lays eggs. I mean, they're at, that's, they need to be controlled. It's fun to do. I like to take kids because it's, it's not hard. You can get away with a lot of any of that kind of stuff. It's just flat out fun.